Today we're going to have a look at ISO and noise on images. We're going to use this chart and see what effect a change in ISO speed and various other factors will have on the quality of the noise in the image. Hi and welcome to Condor Photographic. My name is Marcus Leibrand. Today we're going to have a look at ISO speed and the effect of noise on the image and the various settings and how we can try and manipulate it and see what the camera does with the noise and what we can do with the noise in Photoshop. So let's start off with this image. I've got my multi-zone card that I've created a long time ago with my red, green, blue, fine magenta and yellow onto it, my various shades of grey, so it's got a rather good tonality range and then the pure whites on the side. So, using spot metering, and let's see, let's do this on ISO 100, ISO it's 100, and for this we're going to use the aperture of f5.6 constantly throughout the whole exercise. So, let's keep the aperture constant through all, and just play around with the ISO speed and the shutter speed. So the speed doesn't matter because I am using a tripod, so it's arbitrary. It's just to compensate the shutter speed and the ISO speed variant with each other. Okay, the correct shutter speed for this. will be a third of a stop. So, so look at that and see all the tonal range um, on the throughout the image. Now the next step we will do is we will increase the ISO speed to ISO 1600. Okay, and we do that without changing the aperture or the shutter speed further. The result will be an overexposed image, and as we can see, the image is totally overexposed. Now maybe we can use Photoshop and bring it back and recover the highlights, but we'll have to see when we get to the Photoshop for this one. Now, next step is to change the shutter speed so we can accommodate it and get the correct exposure. Okay, now we turn down the now we, now we turn down the time value, shutter speed. Take the photograph, and again, it is correctly exposed at ISO 1600. Is it corky for? Oh, my for dumb.
So the next step will be So the next step will be to take a photograph but only scale down the ISO speed to ISO 100. That means the image will be underexposed. And by doing so, we can then pull it up in Photoshop to correct the exposure and then compare what Photoshop has done with the exposure and what we have done in the camera automatically with the exposure level. So on a third of a stop, and it should over uh, underexpose. Sorry. So what we need to do here, what you're going to do now is take a photograph and just tone down the ISO speed to ISO 100. And there the image is underexposed. So let's have a look now in Photoshop and see what happens when we view the images and see what we can do in there. Alright, let's have a look at the various images and see what is the results. Let's open them in Photoshop. Right, there is our first image. And the histogram does not look too bad. So this one was shot at ISO 100, one third of a second. Let's just open the image without doing any edits to it. Okay. There's the second image. It was shot on the third of a second at ISO 1600. And we know that it is totally overexposing the image. Because we didn't change the shutter speed and the aperture for that. So let's just open all of them and see what we can make from this if we want to uh, change anything. This one, the 5.6 at one over one, uh, one over 45 uh, fraction of a second at ISO 1600, correctly exposed as well. And we do expect this one to have some noise onto it. And this one, we exposed at 1 over 45 at ISO 100. Now that is underexposing it. So we turn down the ISO speed from 1600 to ISO 100. And let's see if we can have a better result with the noise from an underexposed image compared to an image that is shot on a higher ISO speed. While we're waiting for it to open. Great, there we go. So the first image that we have is the one that is correctly exposed. And when we zoom into it, we look at the noise. You can see there is no noise visible into this. 
so that looks good this image is totally overexposed so now we need to tone down the exposure and that let's go to the levels let's see what we can do on to that one to darken it and we can see the data is washed out we have lost data onto the image so by overexposing the image with about four stops we lose data it is clipped you can also see with this black line right there at the top, running there at the top, we can see it is clipping the data. So that is a failure. This image exposed correctly but with ISO 1600. And it looks alright, but let's zoom in. And now we can see there is some noise in the image. Let's just compare it with this image. And absolutely, we can see there is a dramatic increase in noise in the image. So, by using a higher ISO speed, we have introduced noise to the image. Oh, we're going to take this image and pull up the exposure with four stops and see if we can fix it without any noise. So let's add the levels to that one as well. And we pull the brightness up. Now this is very interesting the colors are totally red and it is very noisy and it is also put some lines over it which they call banding So, if you underexpose an image and you pull up the exposure, you would expect that the image will look close or similar to this image. But this is the result that we get. The thing is that we have to understand how ISO works in the camera. And I'll explain that a little bit better just now. But now that we've seen the results, we can clearly, clearly see that an underexposed image will create more noise than a correctly exposed image with higher ISO. And this image is totally unacceptable and unusable. Obviously, noise and ISO speed can become very, very technical. So 
I don't want to bore you with all these technical jargon and stuff, but let's have a little bit of a deeper look into the, the matter. First of all, the image is captured on the sensor, but that is a analog signal that needs to be converted to the digital format. And for that to happen, you need an analog amplifier to boost the signal so it can be converted from the analog to digital converter. And after that, it gets passed through the digital amplifier that enhances the signal again, and that is being stored onto your memory card. So that's, that's in short, uh, the process that happens. This is also very important because, because of this process, the amplifiers and converter things happening here, it actually clarified a little bit of a misconception that I had between a RAW file and the JPEG file and ISO speed. When we still had the old film cameras, we had film that was very grainy. And that was because of the fact that the, the film consists of emulsion. And the emulsion had very fine crystals on it. On ISO 100, we had the crystals very small and compacted close to each other. On ISO 1600 and higher, we had larger crystals that reacted faster with the light, but the spin-off for that was there was a lot of graininess when the crystals were not exposed properly or when the light goes through between the crystals. It's like having a bowl of jelly and some sand in it. And as you spread it thinner out onto a glass surface, there becomes little uh, holes between the grains of sand and the light can shine through there. And that will cause the noise as well. Digital noise is a little bit different but it reacts similar than the old films will have. So the same conditions that will create graininess will also create noise in the digital area. So the sensor is being sensitized with the electrical current. And when you take the photograph, it reacts with the light and it, kept, uh, it measures the light and sends a signal through to the storage media. When you increase the ISO speed, you actually put a larger load, electrical load, onto the sensor, which helps it to react faster with the light that shines onto it. But if it is poor lighting that comes into the lens, you will have a problem because poor lighting will then be amplified as well and that creates the noise. Well, we have a question, is noise good or bad? And as you can see, this banana is very, very noisy. Okay? We can't hear the noise, but because it's a digital image, we refer to that graininess as noise. Sometimes people would like to have a noisy image. It creates mood and effect and adds to the artistic value of the image. But in general, people do not want noisy photographs especially like wedding photographs, we do not want noisy photographs. We want nice, crisp, clear images. 
So we're going to look at ISO 100, ISO 600, uh, uh, sorry, I mean ISO 1600, overexposed and underexposed images. As you've seen what we've captured so far. This is the image at ISO 100 and I like the color, I like the saturation of the image. It is correctly exposed and it is good and usable. Just bumping up the ISO speed, we overexpose the image and we remember that the area that is totally washed out is unrecoverable and we cannot use it. Now, in this image, we bumped up the ISO speed to 1600 and we can see the noise being introduced to the image. So, the problem is that if we have an underexposed image, that will cause a noisiness and bumping up the ISO will enhance that noisiness for us. But then that brings the question, if you can bump up the ISO with four stops and have a correct exposure, what will happen if we do not bump up the ISO but in Photoshop we will then change the exposure and correct the exposure in Photoshop. Well, we'll see how that looks in a few moments. See, this is a totally underexposed image. And if we now correct the exposure in Photoshop, we will then try to simulate the ISO 1600 enhancement onto it. The problem is we remember with the amplifying of the signals and the uh, analog to digital converter and all those processes that happens inside the camera we do not have that in Photoshop. So having on square number one every time the image that is I like it is ISO 100 and it's correctly exposed. On square number two, we had a little plus there because we overexposed the image and you can see the color is all washed out and sometimes so blown out that we lose the detail into it. Area number three, the image is on ISO 1600 and we can see a lot of noise and on area number four, the image is underexposed, but we corrected the exposure in Photoshop. Now what we expected to happen was the image in number four would have looked like image, the, uh, the quality of the image in area number three, but that does not happen. So if we underexpose the image, we need to increase the exposure with the ISO speed and not pulling it up in Photoshop. We can see the poor quality and obviously from this it is said that do not overexpose or underexpose your image too much. You will have poor quality images that you cannot use. Something else I thought about was, if we compare the images from a RAW file and the JPEG file in the image, in a, uh, that was done in a camera, what will the effect be? And in both instances, there is noise introduced into the image. However, the noise in the large RAW file is significantly less and we have a better quality in color than in the JPEG file. As you can see the yellow and this yellow here is a bit of a 
difference in it that the raw fall saturation is much better than the saturation of the image in the JPEG file. There's a lot of other algorithms also involved converting the raw data into the JPEG file and the image. Therefore, it is also clearly that you can get better results by using a large raw file than using a JPEG file. Another thing that I noticed is although there's a lot of noise in the large raw file, by scaling it down, resizing it to a smaller size, the pixels overlap and by doing that it gets filtered out and we reduce the noise. When we decrease the size of the image slightly. So if you would shrink this image even more and more, it will appear that these noisiness will go away. So it is better to use a very large file and then reduce the size of it and reduce the noise in that matter for it. So we looked at ISO 100 versus ISO 1600, overexposed and underexposed images, raw versus JPEG, and small versus large image sizes. And that's mostly all of the goodies that will affect the noisiness in your image. I hope you learned something from this. Please like my channel.